Hey everyone, this is another one of those follow-up videos. I tried it once before and I enjoyed it. I thought I'd try it again. Uh, the idea is I would like to have another look at the, my previous video, which was the finite difference method video and look at some of the things I missed and maybe respond to some of your questions and some of your comments as well. To explain to people who didn't see me do this before, uh, the idea is that this is meant to be kind of low-key or sort of relaxed. Uh, it's kind of meant to be unscripted uh, to make my life a little bit easier. Not necessarily unprepared, but unscripted. And check this out. Hey, look, I've redecorated. That's a treat as well. Look at that. So my previous video, the finite difference method, I had a good reaction to it. Uh, people seem to like it. To explain it, if you didn't see it, the idea is um, you start with a sequence, let's say a mystery sequence, so you've got a sequence and then you look at the differences and you look at the differences of the differences and then their differences and so on until you get a row of constants. Then you can start to work backwards on that and you can work out the formula for the mystery sequence. That's the idea. And then I also said that you don't always have to do this from first principles and that there is a formula that you can use. And I showed you the formula. So I, like I said, I did get a good reaction from this. Really nice to see. Uh, I mean, some people were saying, why haven't I ever seen this before? Uh, and I'm really glad I could show you something new and different. Uh, but some people were saying that they had seen this before and maybe they had done like a lesson on it at school once, but had never followed up on it. Uh, and some people were saying that they had seen it before and they found it themselves which is amazing, it was really great. I love hearing that, uh, that people were just playing with sequences or numbers, even when they were little or kids or something, and that they had noticed these patterns before, even if they hadn't found the formula, which I wouldn't expect you to, that they had been playing around with maths. And it's really nice to hear. So I'm glad I could show you something new and interesting. Uh, some people said that they had seen it before, and actually used it, and used it in engineering, and used it in computer graphics, uh, which is, also interesting to hear, but the most common question I got was, how do you know that that last row is a row of constants and not like a row of 100 of the same number and then something else? And I think the answer to that question is you don't know. You don't know. I think it's something that you assume it is and then this is the formula you get. And then the formula you get fits the data you've got. What I'm saying is it is a step along the way, isn't it? It's something to aim for. So you're assuming that's a row of constants, then you have a formula, and if it was serious maths and proper maths, then you would say, this is a candidate formula. I now have to prove that that actually is true. Uh, having a candidate formula is really gonna help you. Uh, and if it's not serious maths, then you can just say, this, this is a formula that fits the data I've got. Uh, so for example, and some people pointed this out in the comments, this method will work for finding a formula for any sequence you've got. So imagine uh, you've got a sequence like this. Obviously there is an intention here. Uh, so these are the square numbers. So I've got a sequence of the square numbers. Uh, I've got zero, one, four, nine, and 16, and so on. And you do that method on it. So you look at the differences, differences of differences and so on. If you use the uh, Newton formula that I showed you for my video, you would get a formula for this, although it's obviously x squared. If you use the uh, Newton formula, I've got f of x equals. Now the uh, formula looks very ugly when you uh, first see it. It turns out to be not that bad to use. I didn't find it that bad to use. The Newton formula would give you that, although if you tidy that up, that is x squared, right? So you've got a formula for that sequence, although then you could say, aha, actually it isn't uh, a sequence of square numbers. I'm gonna put uh, some old random number there, whatever I want. That's my secret. That was the sequence I was actually thinking of. And then if you do uh, the same method on that, so if you look at the differences, which I think I'm gonna get 57 here, and then that will be a 50, that would be a 40, Eight, you see what I'm doing there, and then have I carried on? Uh, so I've got a zero here, a 48 there, 48 there, and maybe then I assume I've finished it. Let's say I have finished it there, that's my last row, 
and I use Newton's formula, these zeros are going to be quite nice. That means I can ignore some of the terms here. And I would get 48, which is that final difference, divided by 5 factorial, which is uh, 120, because this is my, that's the sequence, and then it's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth line down. And then a falling factorial, which is x times x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 4. There we go, like that. Uh, and that would be a formula that fits this sequence. What that means, if you use that formula, you do get the square numbers to start off with. You would get all these square numbers, 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, and then 73. Uh, it was kind of fun. It means you can solve any sequence you want. Uh, I, I did hear some people do that when they're given like a sequence and go, well, actually, I could solve that using my polynomial method and just annoy people. So don't annoy people. I don't think we want you to do that. So um, that was from the most common comment I got. The formula, the Newton formula, like I said, does look kind of ugly, not beautiful, um, but I found it kind of nice to use anyway. Uh, people did notice that the formula looks suspiciously like differentiation, and they started noticing connections with differentiation. Uh, so obviously there is a reason for that. So for people who know differentiation, and this is what I didn't want to go into in the video, but for people who do know differentiation, they notice this, this connection. So this is differentiation. Right? And differentiation says, well, it's for finding the gradient at a point, but to uh, the formula for differentiation is this. It's f of, and then you've got x plus h there, minus f of x over h, and then you take the limit as h tends to zero. Right, so that is the formula for differentiation. However, if I took that formula and set h to equal one, so not take this limit, but set h to equal one, then obviously I'm gonna get f of x plus one minus f of x divided by one, uh, which is just the difference. Uh, so yeah, the difference is related to differentiation. Oh. Maybe that's why it's called that. Yeah, I think it is. I think the, differentiate, the differential means an infinitesimal difference. I think that is where it comes from. And so for that reason, they're very closely related. And there's a whole area of maths called finite difference equations or finite difference calculus, which is very closely related to calculus. And you can do the same sort of thing. So you can look at area under the graph or approximate area under the graph. You can do kind of differential equations or approximate uh, answers to differential equations with these things, difference equations. And people pointed out to me in the comments that Mathologer did a video on this about not that long ago, eight months ago. I didn't know that, by the way. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. And I didn't know that. And he goes into uh, this connection in a lot more detail. So if you're interested in that connection, go look at Mathologer's video. Someone also pointed out to me that James uh, Tanton has done a video about this kind of thing, finite differences. And uh, James Tanton, if you haven't seen James Tanton's videos before, he's great. He's really, really great videos and really approachable and a uh, friend of the channel and uh, I recommend you watch that video as well. He did it in a different way to me as well. Um, he did it in a way where he said, well, if you look at the difference table, we call that a difference table for x squared, and you look at the difference table for x cubed and a difference table for x and so on, and then you've got your mystery sequence, you look at the difference table of that by combining multiples of the difference table for x squared and x cubed and x and so on, you can find the mystery formula, uh, which is a different method to how I did it. And it's a really nice way of doing it. And his video is a lot clearer and a lot more approachable than what I've just said there. Um, so, oh, and some people said, well then, oh, 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 what about doing it for the primes? Oh, wouldn't that be fun if we took the sequences of primes? Uh -huh. um, yeah, it would be fun. Let's try it. So if you do it with the sequence of primes, 
your, I mean, depending on how many primes you take, you could find a polynomial that will fit the data you got. But here's the other cool thing, right? There is an actual maths thing about this. Here is the difference table for the primes. There they are. I've done a few of the primes anyway. Actually, it's not quite what I did before because it is the difference table. There are the differences. It's the absolute differences. Um, so I just look at the positive differences. So if you take those are the differences there, and then you see the difference here, look, four minus two is two, and then two minus four is two, with positive two. So we're looking at the positive differences. Okay, so that's what we're doing. There's a thing called Galbraith's conjecture that says that every row starts with a one. Apart from this one here, the first one, the row of primes, which starts with a two, and then every row of differences starts with a one. And that is an unproven conjecture, but it has been checked up to 10 trillion prime numbers, which is something like 340 something billion rows of the difference table, and they all start with a one. But it hasn't been proven that they always start with a one. So uh, an unproven conjecture. Uh, and isn't that cool and fun? So there is, there is a, a thing with prime numbers that you can do and look into if you want to. Uh, so that, I guess that's all that I wanted to say about that video. One last bit of business though, uh, if you don't mind, and I don't want to do this too often, but if I go one video back, further back, which was the, uh, the British flag theorem one, which was to have uh, some sort of uh, setup like this, and there was this whole thing about the British flag theorem. Now, I wanted to be able to do, uh, hi, I wanted to be able to do one of these rectangles where each one of these lengths is an integer, including the diagonals. And I had an example like that in the video I did. And I said, but I don't know how to make them. I've got, I found a method. I found a method to make them. After I put a video up, I went, I've thought of a method to make them. Uh, so, and it's not that hard. So you start with two, so I'll do it through an example. You take two Pythagorean triples. There they are, right? Three, four, five, and five, 12, and 13. So you take two Pythagorean triples, and then you can build one of these rectangles uh, where it's all integers. What you do, let's take that second Pythagorean triple. I'm gonna multiply it completely by three. So I multiply the whole thing by three which is the value I get from the first triple. So if I multiply it all by three, that's gonna be uh, 15, 36, uh, and 39. And now I'm gonna take that second Pythag triple and multiply it by four, which has come from the first Pythag. So I'm gonna multiply the whole thing by four. So that's gonna be 20, 48, and uh, 13 times four, 52. I can pack of cards, right, so there you go. Then I'm gonna take my first Pythag, and multiply it by five, coming from here. So I'll get a 15 and a 20 and a 25. You get the idea, because I'm gonna take uh, the first Pythag and multiply it by 12. If I multiply it by 12, I get 36, uh, 48 and uh, 60. All right, so I get these four, I've constructed, there you go, got it. I construct these four Pythag triples, and those are gonna be the lengths of my sides here. Uh, if I can uh, st steal a look at my notes though, that's gonna look like this. So it's gonna be 15, let's say that's 48, and that's 20, and that's 36, okay. There, and now everything's an integer. Uh, so I, I can, I can make one of those rectangles from two, two Pythags. However, Richard Holmes from my comments then said, is that always going to be true? Are all examples with integers on the rectangle constructed that way? And he found a counter example where it's not. So this has not been completely solved. We have one construction, but it's not completely solved. There you go. So this is Richard Holmes counter example. Uh, forgive that I wrote 60 twice at the top and the bottom. Uh, so I've got 25, 19 there, 60 and 312. And that is integers, including the diagonals. That's all Pythagorean triples. And that has not been constructed 
the way I've just described. So that is a counter example. So there are other examples out there. Uh, so, and that was always a, a fun kind of problem uh, that some of us were playing with in the comments. I have finished. I finished with my roundup of things I wanted to talk about. So the only thing left for me, I guess, is maybe hint at a future video. I haven't recorded it yet, but I do plan to make a video, uh, hopefully then, soon. Let's not promise anything. Next week? No, soon, let's see. Uh, and uh, what am I gonna tell you about it? I'm not gonna tell you anything about it. It's a secret. You'll find out what that means uh, when it finally goes up. All right, I will leave it there. Thank you. Uh, and again, thank you for all your positive comments and all your positive taking part. Hey, hey, there were some people that I wanted to say thank you to for their lovely comments. I mean, there were so many, uh, but let's, let's just call out a few names and then there was many more. Um, so there was um, Michael Scott, not that one, but hi. And there was Rubens Cube, hi. And there was Eric Villas and Andrew Marcillo and lots of lovely comments from people. Uh, another thank you to Muffins Aplenty, who's uh, helping me out in the comments and answers people's questions when you know, I can't answer everybody's questions and, and some people are helping me out with that kind of thing. Thank you to all those people. All right, I will end it there. I'll say bye for now. Bye.